Hello, you're listening to Astrology Hotline. I'm Kyle Pierce, and this is the forecast for January 16th through January 22nd of 2023. And we're going to be going over the main events for the week, astrologically, that is, focusing primarily on Mercury stationing direct on Tuesday, January 17th. Take that back. On Wednesday, January 18th, as well as the new moon in Aquarius on Saturday, January 21st. And then we'll wrap it up with a sort of run through of the week day by day using the uh, the planetary days as our guide. But before we dive in, why don't you do me a real quick favor? And if you're listening on Spotify or Apple or iTunes, just go ahead and give the podcast a five-star rating. It's super, super helpful. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, go ahead and give give us a like, subscribe, and such as. Super, super helpful. And if you're interested in learning about the 36 decans of the Zodiac, which uh, I incorporate quite extensively in this forecast, as well as most others, uh, consider joining us on the three of... <clears throat> Jeez. On the Three of Wands Discord server for our uh, almost weekly deck and crawl, uh, three Tuesdays every month at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we go over the meaning and associated images and deities and such of the Deccan that the sun is placed in for that week, and in, uh, engage in a group discussion where we share our thoughts and sort of interpret them together. You'll find a link to that in the show notes. And without further ado, let's talk about uh, Mercury stationing direct on Wednesday, rather appropriately on the day of Mercury. So I think we're, we're probably likely to see that one rather literally on Wednesday. Uh, you know, we might make up our minds about something. We might get clear on some ongoing issue that's been going on the past three weeks or so. Sometimes you'll get things like, I don't know, maybe... Uh, you ordered a pair of <clears throat> tweezers from uh, Amazon and they sent you a pair of nail clippers and you called Amazon and got real mad at them. And they said, oh, sorry, uh, pretty sure you ordered clippers. Um, and you're like, no, I ordered tweezers and <clears throat> blah, 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 blah. They had to talk to their, you had to escalate it to their uh, whatever department handles that shit. And uh <laughs> After, you know, several weeks of phone tag, you finally uh, get a email that your stainless steel pair of designer tweezers are in the mail on the way. Something like that. Uh, Mercury retrograde itself is not what I'm particularly interested in, honestly. I'm a lot more interested in what effect that's going to have on Mars. Uh, as you may recall, Mars stationed direct last week on on Thursday, the 12th. But maybe you were expecting uh, a little more than what we got. I did notice a few things um, in regards to the ongoing war in Ukraine, which is kind of my, my touchstone for the Mars retrograde and really what's going on with Mars in general, because uh, uh, it is really the most Marsy thing happening in the world at the moment. It's the most obviously Mars thing. Uh, just a couple of days before the station on, uh, I believe it was Tuesday, the the 10th, uh, Vladimir Putin replaced the main commander uh, leading Russian troops in the ongoing invasion uh, since really the beginning of the war with a new guy. Certainly seems uh, relevant to Mars stationing and about to uh take a new direction and we also have uh I believe ukraine is about to receive some tanks and that has been sort of confirmed which i guess is kind of a big deal you know tanks are uh, pretty useful for uh blowing people up and, and not getting blown up yourself at least depending on on how you use them certainly uh if you're planning an offensive you're going to want tanks so we do get a, a little bit of that mars accumulating resources <clears throat> while it's sitting on Aldebaran. But, you know, not necessarily anything really, really huge and groundbreaking necessarily. Uh, and you wouldn't necessarily expect that, um, given that it's a station, it's a sort of pause and a change in direction, but it is a, a pause in a sense. It's, it's not big movement yet. 
<clears throat> However, with Mercury ruling Mars, having still been retrograde, uh, Mars doesn't really fully have uh, full forward mobility quite yet. So Mercury is still uh, sending kind of retrograde sort of vibes <laughs> its way, and it's maybe not ready to issue a, a forward march order quite yet. He's not until Mercury itself stations direct. So uh, maybe expect to see uh, expect to see a bit more Mars um, moving forward <clears throat> starting Wednesday. But also notable is that uh, uh, Mercury stationing direct marks the last of the uh, the visible planets, at least, to wrap up their their retrograde cycles. We had a, a lot of retrograde energy um, over the last month or two, so we're kind of finally starting to move forward. We're not um, moving backwards so much anymore <laughs> in the vast majority of the areas of our lives, um, but we are still retreading old territory. However, by the end of the week on Sunday, the 22nd, uh, Uranus will also station. So things are likely to start feeling a lot less maybe stagnant or aimless or uncertain. Uh, we're getting a lot of decisive forward motion by the end of the week. And really, all of this kind of ties into what I'm going to be looking at as the the really the big main event this week, and that is the new moon in Aquarius. And this honestly looks like it's tying um, most of what's happening in the sky all together. And there's really, a, at least from my perspective, a very clear and cohesive narrative that seems to emerge from this new moon. <clears throat> so let's uh let's take a look let's pull up the chart <clears throat> right all right so we get ourselves a new moon in aquarius uh right about one degree first degree of aquarius at right around 3 4 p.m on saturday uh eastern standard time and as you can see here <clears throat> the sun is the sun and moon are applying to a pretty decent little sextile with Jupiter and Aries right there at four degrees and, a, you know, a fairly wide but relevant trine to Mars stationed over at uh, eight degrees of Gemini. It's with any lunation where you want to look at uh, the ruling planet of the lunation and, well, it's right there, co-present with the sun and moon, uh, we have Saturn at 24 degrees of Aquarius on the day of Saturn, no less, with Venus uh, applying to a pretty close conjunction with Saturn right there at 23 degrees of Aquarius. So quite a lot to talk about with this. I like it personally. Uh, it's not one that gives me the warm and fuzzies per se, uh, nor would I expect it to deliver warm and fuzzies <laughs> by any stretch. Uh, this is, you know, a kind of a somber um cool kind of lunation um and it does seem to be introducing some rather heavy or, or maybe weighty themes and possibly decisions this is actually the uh the pentultimate lunar cycle before saturn uh, departs aquarius in march not to return for the next what 27 years or so as it will uh let's see go it will enter Pisces uh, shortly after, yeah, shortly after the new moon in Pisces. So while this is not necessarily the uh, the climax per se, it's uh, introducing the context for the climax, we could say. Uh, usually it's the, the penultimate, the second to last episode of any series that you really get the... Um, the main story, in a sense, or, or what uh, everything has been building up to, it's pretty much introduced by the uh, the penultimate episode. A lot of times it's the best episode of the season, and, and the last one is just kind of wrap up. Um, thinking of what, uh, season two of Game of Thrones, that was the uh, the Battle of Blackwater, which is a pretty badass episode. So I think uh, Game of Thrones in particular always had uh, the best penultimate episodes uh, to cap off their seasons, but... Nonetheless, um, we do seem to get what seems to me to be a very strong theme of a sort of grand separation of some kind or a step into the unknown and the sort of run down the, the checklist before we actually depart on the, the, the big trip. 
right? We got to um, make sure that we fulfill and meet all of our obligations before we move on to the the next big phase. And and this one seems to be very much about uh, a breaking from the pack in a sense, or uh, certainly like a departure from the status quo. This new moon is in the first decade of Aquarius. Uh, we definitely get themes around the idea of exile and what it is to be uh, cast out of, say, the um, well-established earthly boundaries of Capricorn, but also to uh, depart from that which is very uh, firm and solid and entrenched, right? <clears throat> I think with this transition from Capricorn to Aquarius, I always think of stuff like uh, somebody who has maybe built their life around a certain career and uh, not to overlean on the, on the corporate quality of, of of Capricorn, but because Capricorn is rather institutional. It is, you know, what are the well-known and established institutions and how do you work within them and around them? But say, you know, you have been working your desk job, doing your nine to five, building up that 401k with your nice um, annual Christmas bonus and generous dental plan. Uh, but maybe, uh, especially if the sun is conjunct Pluto <laughs> leading up to it, you get uh, maybe canned or maybe you get laid off or, you know, that corporation is revealed to be a giant Ponzi scheme. And after uh, half the CEOs jump out of the top story window, uh, you have to figure out what the fuck you're going to do now. You're stepping into the unknown. And maybe, you know, you had a hand in it um, and you're sort of marked by it in a sense. Maybe you can't go back. Maybe you can't do that job anymore because you're a pariah now in the world of stapler insurance. Um, and now you got something new, something totally new. And maybe uh, it can be kind of liberating. You know, maybe you didn't want that job <clears throat> And you were just kind of doing it because you couldn't think of what else to do because it was secure, because, you know, paid the bills and it just didn't really make sense to do anything else. And now maybe you got to figure out what you actually want to do or what you actually can do, what's possible uh, for you now. And that's kind of the theme uh, when we transition from Capricorn to Aquarius. But really, um, it's not really an Aquarius where we just start out uh, outside of the walls. Uh, though, you know, sometimes that can be the case. We still um, have to go through that whole process that leads us outside the gate. And what uh, emerges strongly for me uh, when I look at this little stellium of Aquarius planets is disenchantment with what is and the sort of planting of a little seed here in the new moon <clears throat> with the new moon that will hopefully sprout into a path of uh, individuation. So especially when you layer on this uh, sextile with Jupiter in the first decade of, of Aries, we get this very strong call to the, the frontier. We're, we're being pulled to potentially uh, embark on a, a path that nobody has ever walked before. Now, obviously, not all, uh, how many is it now, 8 billion or so humans on the planet are, are going to be embarking on totally fresh and original paths, per se, but, you know, for some of us, uh, at least, especially those with charts, you know, substantially tied in with a lot of these transits or with certain uh, time lords maybe active, uh, there's a strong call to to carve out a new path that is very uh, personally defined and in many ways defined in contrast to perhaps a, a status quo or in contrast to what has been expected of you up to this point or what you have maybe been accustomed to expect from yourself. Uh, for some of us may have been uh, feeling this call starting sometime back in May when Jupiter first entered Aries. And we had uh, the beginning of this process of carving out a, a very personally defined path or uh, the beginning of this process of just figuring out what, uh, what sets you apart from the herd if you will. What is your uh, personal stamp you want to leave on reality? You know, what's your personal uh, path to immortality? What's your, uh, your, your claim to fame, maybe? And while maybe this process with Jupiter began back in May, didn't really get to finish it. Uh, Jupiter would have stationed 
retrograde that uh, June or July of 2022 at about seven degrees of Aries and just started moving backwards. Unfinished business back in Pisces. Now Jupiter's back in Aries and it is going to finish the job this time. It's going through the whole Aries cycle. So maybe for some of us, we had to go back, <clears throat> maybe tidy things up or create a um, more sustainable foundation on which to to launch our particular ventures. And maybe maybe the path looks like it's opening up again with Jupiter back in Aries. Or maybe uh, the longer path requires some sort of uh, journey of self-realization, perhaps a uh, sort of challenge to sort of see what you're made of. And uh, while Jupiter is still sort of retracing old ground, as all the planets start to move forward around this, this new moon in Aquarius, uh, you maybe have to ask yourself, uh, ask ourselves, you know, what's holding us back? Uh, with Saturn here ruling the the lunation, um, Saturn may or may not be uh, giving us all the green light quite yet, you know. And in this uh, third decan of Aquarius, which has strong themes around that sort of uh, point on the threshold where a lot of us can get stuck, you know, maybe we're dreaming of of the future, but we are perhaps still uh, trapped in certain obligations or in certain mindsets or patterns that are holding us back, sort of keeping us on on the precipice of that new reality, maybe. And we're maybe being uh, asked to, to figure out what exactly it is that we are still bonded to or tied to. Perhaps uh, what obligations do we need to meet? You know, what debts have to be paid before we can move on? But also maybe more... Uh, more challenging is figuring out what what has to be sacrificed you know to move on this uh the third decan of aquarius gets associated with the uh the seven of swords tarot card familiar with tarot uh this is the the after tarot is a uh, slight variation on the, the rider Waitsmith smith card but it's got a dude uh leaving a military camp he's got some swords in his hand um, and he had, uh, leaving two of them behind. And I guess in this one, he's about to walk into some sort of trap. It's a card asking, you know, what's, uh, worth keeping and what's, what do you got to leave behind? And actually with this card, it's kind of funny because he thinks he's leaving, but he's about to walk into a, a little snare, right? <laughs> Maybe because he's not looking where he's going. And that's the, uh, the thing with Saturn. It's really, it's, it asks you to, to get it right, <laughs> uh, means, having foresight, uh, looking at the uh, the cold, hard facts of reality, however uh, difficult they may be to look at. Saturn says, look, this is real, and this is what what's actually possible. So, you know, if you uh, really want to uh, build a, a world for yourself on the frontier, right, you have to come up with a, a really concrete and realistic plan. Because, uh, say, if you're um, just playing uh, Oregon Trail recently, actually, <laughs> and... Uh, in Oregon Trail, you know, if you want to make it to Oregon, you've got to um, make sure you have all your provisions. You got to leave at the right time of year. And often you have to make difficult decisions where you have to uh, choose between, you know, fording, fording the uh, river during a, a rainstorm or, or waiting it out, but maybe running out of food. Because if uh, you don't go on the, the Oregon Trail prepared, you will die. And even if you go super prepared, you might still die <laughs> if you uh, make the wrong choices, which is why Saturn, uh, you know, Saturn rules that that boundary. Like, are you sure you you want to make that decision? Do you stay here where it's safe or do you do you step into the unknown? Uh, but also with the, the Oregon Trail, you can't take everything with you. You know, you can only uh, take what you can carry. And it's uh, not just all your stuff that you can't necessarily take with you it's uh possibilities you maybe also can't take with you and uh with mars here stationing at, at eight degrees with gemini uh mars is there to dish out all the possibilities <laughs> you know it's uh it looks to me like you know we have to uh we're still reviewing we um, start to move forward or we can really uh get on get on the oregon trail right and and then with venus uh making the conjunction here with Saturn, this can be a bit of a, a mixed bag here. On the one hand, you can look at it as Venus uh, offering support to Saturn, 
you know, Venus being a benefic planet tends to say yes. And how uh, can we improve the situation? I also see how Venus here could sort of tug at our heartstrings. You know, it's one thing to do all the, the cold, hard calculus, figuring out what all the provisions are, uh, what provisions are required to survive, and uh, even on the trail, uh, what of two difficult decisions is going to lead to the highest likelihood of survival. But it's another thing when you have to make those decisions when people you care about are also going to be facing the consequences. People you love, often those are the, the stickiest and most uh, constraining, in a sense, uh, tethers that keep us from maybe stepping a across that threshold. So like maybe your sweetheart Dolores, you know, has decided to join you on the trail and leave all of her family behind and, and go with you to build a new future together. But now Dolores's life is at risk too, right? Do you really want to put her through that? The sort of uh, moisture that Venus maybe adds to the equation isn't necessarily uh, conducive to the, the cold hard logic that we need to apply, especially when a lot of the themes coming up here are, are very much about uh, individual pursuits and um, beginning of very many personal journeys. Imagine for the vast majority of us, you know, the, the scale is not necessarily quite so grandiose as uh, stepping onto the, the Oregon Trail, but there's a lot of um, data to be processed here, <laughs> um, perhaps uh, quite a bit of emotional data, which doesn't always run so cleanly through uh, Saturnian calculations. So while I, I will say again that I, I do like this lunation, um, I don't like it because it feels good. I like it because it seems to be bringing all the necessary components that need to be considered before making a step towards uh, actual change. It's not fun, but it's what needs to be done before moving on to the next thing, which I don't know about all of you, but uh, a pretty angular Saturn, which means that it uh, <laughs> seems to mark significant shifts in my life whenever Saturn changes signs. And I'm... Um, I'm ready to be done with Saturn and Aquarius. So uh, let's do it. I'm I'm done. <laughs> I'm ready to be done. Saturn has been uh, in its own sign, one of its own signs for for too long now. I'm I'm ready to to not maybe have everything be be quite so serious. I think we've all had our our faces pressed against our cold hard reality long enough. So you know whatever uh, big step you feel like you're you're moving towards, um, start taking inventory. What are you going to load up in your in your wagon? Who are you taking with you? Maybe get your, your juices flowing. Uh, actually play a game of Oregon Trail. It's still a great game. And uh, yeah, with that, we'll move on to the, the day by day. So start with Monday, the day of the moon. And sorry, guys, not a lot of great. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we've had a decent Monday in a while. And this Monday is no different. Or we'll say different, but not better. Got ourselves a, a moon in Scorpio hanging out with the south node. So it's maybe a bit of an emo Monday. So, you know, if you have the option, take the day off. Be sleeping, uh, cry into your your pillow. Or just, you know, tough it out. It's just a it's just a day. You can ride it out. Uh and then what Monday night we get the the night of Venus. Not tons of relief there. Venus uh making her way over to, to that conjunction with Saturn and arguably, but mm, Monday night, Venus is making her way to that conjunction with Saturn and still kind of sort of in a, what you might call an enclosure between the trine ray of Mars from eight degrees of Gemini over here in Aquarius where Saturn is. Um, but it is being interrupted by the, the moon in Scorpio, at least uh, in the earlier hours of the night. I can't say that it's that much relief, per se, but it's um, uh, what uh, the moon in Scorpio can be quite good for, especially when it's waning, is that sort of a uh, draining of the swamp, if you will, uh, the internal swamp, or sort of um, disentangling ourselves from no longer relevant uh, attachments, which I think is... Uh, 
probably a, a key ingredient to finishing up Saturn and Aquarius for a lot of us. So, you know, if you're if you're feeling it, uh, get, get your hands dirty, get, get in there, see what you you find in that uh, dark sewer of your soul, and then uh, Tuesday, <clears throat> the day of Mars. We still have Mars camping out on Aldebaran, waiting for Mercury to station direct. So if you're still feeling a bit lethargic or just having a hard time getting uh, getting going on Tuesday, uh, don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's kind of still still on the docket. You know, have an extra cup of coffee, whatever you got to do. And then uh, Tuesday night, night of Saturn. Saturn getting cozy with Venus at least uh, on its way. So, you know, some of the themes that were uh, pertinent Monday night, you know, might be being asked to place your heart on Saturn's cold scale. Or, uh, you know, for those of us not necessarily wrapped up in the, the drama of this particular configuration, you know, it is Saturn plus Venus, which may feel a bit lighter than the last couple of Tuesday nights. Uh, often Saturn and, and Venus together are quite good with um, crafts. So if you got a little bit of hands-on work to do, or if you're, you know, crafty person, might be a, a nice night to unwind with some some crafts, making shit. And then uh, Wednesday, Mercury station in direct. So Mercury stationing direct stuff, likely to be pretty relevant. And we already talked about that. So move on to uh, Wednesday night, the night of the sun, and oh, we got sun conjunct Pluto. <laughs> Sorry, guys, this is just a rough week, apparently. I imagine for most of us, you know, not going to feel this too significantly. It's just a, it's a quick transit. But if you're already kind of a sun Pluto type person, you know, you might find yourself uh, staring into the void. You know, maybe the void will stare back at you. Actually, with uh, Mercury stationing direct, you know, could be really good evening to start maybe plumbing the, the depths for ideas, writing them out. Or if you happen to be a, a writer of, of horror, um, Ludo stuff's pretty good for horror. And the, uh, the doorway to collective ideas of uh, institutional horror is wide open. In fact, uh, I'm not sure how many more sun pluto conjunctions in capricorn we're gonna get actually let me take a look and we'll get one more in 2024 but 2025 it's gonna be sun conjunct pluto and aquarius so if you want to um take a moment perhaps wednesday night to sort of collect some insight on uh what pluto and capricorn has been about i think actually that might be what i'm gonna do <laughs> uh it's uh Good time to maybe gain some clarity on it. Maybe see what that transit has been for you, especially if you have Capricorn planets. Maybe reconnoiter with the changes that your psyche has undergone <laughs> since, uh, what, 2008, when Pluto first ingressed into to Capricorn. Maybe take inventory of to what degree um, are the particular flavor of, of boogeyman that has been brought to our attention over the past uh, 14, 15 years or so uh, really new boogeymen and how much uh, are they just the same boogeymen that we've always had? We're just a little more aware of them right now. And then uh, Thursday, day of Jupiter. You got that Jupiter in Aries uh, at three degrees, coming up on four degrees of Aries right now. And, you know, maybe leading up to the uh, full moon in Aquarius on Saturday, you can maybe consider... Uh, Sharpening uh, the axe that you want to use to uh, carve out a new homestead for yourself in the bountiful land of Oregon, <laughs> in that great sought-after future that you may or may not be be building for yourself. Uh, probably more on a mundane level, uh, you might be feeling, you know, comparatively a little more optimistic, a little more upbeat, energized, maybe uh, self-motivated, a little more self-directed. Especially now that Mercury is direct, uh, Mars is a little more uh, fully direct in Mars being the ruler of Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter is, is a little more clear and able to move forward. So 
weeks. If you're if you're feeling the juice, uh, take advantage and maybe enjoy the glow a little bit, or you know, ride the enthusiasm to maybe do something enjoyable with friends. Or if you uh, want to approach your boss about something, maybe uh, I would do that Thursday. It's probably one of the more supportive days of the of the week. And then Thursday night we get uh, the night of the moon, and it's a very very waning moon. It's if visible at all, it is but a, a tiny sliver in the sky. So not a, a high energy evening. I would probably go easy, but uh, you know, with uh, the moon applying to Mercury, there may be a little bit of support for some uh, mercurial endeavors, and then we'll get a nice little uh, square with, with Jupiter a little after sunset. That's uh, like a nice little boost, but I would say overall a night more favorable to probably relaxing or unwinding, getting some rest, or you know maybe wrapping up projects rather than initiating new ones. And then Friday, day of Venus, uh, got Venus-Saturn. We talked a lot about that. So Venus Saturn themes, guys. I'd say favorable for um, you know, being crafty, ignoring uh the giant zit on your partner's forehead, or potentially coming to some kind of a formal agreement, perhaps. You know, I'd say if you're um trying to engage in any traditionally Venusian works, uh probably more um more favorable for those with uh, more detached or intellectual themes or uh, those involving um, bonds or restraints of some kind. Uh, it could also be favorable for maybe cheering up a, a friend that you know has been feeling down or if you've been feeling down, reaching out to a, a friend. And then uh, Friday night, we got uh, get the night of Mars. Um, I, you know, I wouldn't call this one a club night <laughs> personally. Uh most of you will be fine if you wanted to go out uh, to some sort of big, loud event. Um, but if you have planets and replacements closely configured to Mars, I would I would lay low. Uh, it's probably a good general rule of thumb. Uh, if you have like a close Mars transit, especially a station, um, just just lay low. You know, don't uh, you know expose yourself to unnecessary risk. And then. Uh, Saturday, we got got a uh, <clears throat> new moon Saturday, which uh, I think we went over in detail. So if you got any new moon rituals planned, I would plan them around, you know, setting the sort of uh, cool and weighty uh, intentions that maybe we talked about already. Saturday night, uh, Mercury, bleh, Mercury will be swift in motion, not swift, but moving forward. So while some of us may be cleaning up messes from earlier in the week, uh, things should be going more smoothly as far as uh, mercurial topics are concerned. But uh, Mercury is a little lonely where it is right now, separating from a sextile with Jupiter. Uh, and while it is making its way towards a trine with Uranus in terms of visible planets, uh, it's kind of running in the void. Uh, for a while, actually, the moon will show up to keep Mercury company, uh, making aspects, you know, with Mercury throughout the week. But Mercury is kind of on its own, which is sort of a weird place for Mercury. Mercury tends to take on the character of whatever planet it's closely associated with. And, it, you know, tends to like to have people to chat with. Uh, Uranus may be a little bit abstract, but... Uh, could be company. I don't know if any of you are writers. Uh, I would love to hear how you experience uh, newly direct Mercury in Capricorn, just hanging out by itself for the most part. Is it uh, like a splendid kind of isolation? Good for tuning out the world and digging into some some good books or you know writing project, or is there just like no inspiration whatsoever? Let me know. Shoot me an email. Uh, post in the comments, something like that, and then. Yeah, Sunday. We got the day of the sun. Sun's in Aquarius, so good day for uh being weird and aloof. Maybe uh one of the things I love about Sun and Aquarius people is that they're not super self-involved. Uh, they tend to 
you know, when they think about themselves, they're pretty objective, but it does sort of lend, um, lend itself to an outward kind of gaze where you can, uh, if you are accustomed to thinking about yourself all the time or, uh, living inside your own head, uh, tapping into the sun in Aquarius might give you a little bit of a break. And overall, I mean, uh, this is kind of a hermity kind of week. It's not a super social week. So, you know, spending a Sunday in quiet contemplation could be a Sunday well spent this week. Then uh, finally, we Sunday night. <clears throat> Sunday night is Jupiter night. So probably one of the more pleasant and supportive nights of the weekend of the week. Sunday night usually has the, the best TV. So you may want to, to partake or indulge. Otherwise, uh, you know, partake of the, the jovial spirits on tap, which uh, do tend to have a, a bit of a martial flavor. But you may find, uh, you know, renewed spirits, um, depending on how um, closely configured the Venus-Saturn conjunction that's going exact uh, tonight, uh, that night is to your chart. Uh, I don't know, as I'm uh, recording this on the, the night of Mars, so um, I am tapped out. That's all I got. For tonight. So uh as always, you can book a reading with me at Kyle Pierce Astrologer.com. And uh I think that's all I got. I hope you guys have a great week. I know it's kind of a a bummy sort of week, but I actually have a couple elections I'm looking at for the week after. So I'll be sure to share those with you guys. Um anyway, that's it for me. Thanks so much for listening and I'll see you next time. If you have a question you'd like to hear answered on Astrology Hotline, shoot us an email at astrologyhotlinepod at gmail.com.